Before the Ages of Man, Timeline Series, Volume 1, by Icantar of Shimmerine. Before man came to rule Tamriel, and before the chronicles of the historians recorded the affairs of the rulers of Tamriel, the events of our world are only known through myths and legends, and through the divinely inspired teachings of the Nine Divines. For convenience, historians divide these distant ages of prehistory into two broad periods of time, the Dawn Era and the Merithic Era. The Dawn Era. The Dawn Era is that period before the beginning of mortal time when the feats of the gods take place. The Dawn Era ends with the exodus of the gods and magic from the world at the founding of the Adamantine Tower. The term Merethic comes from the Nordic, literally, Era of the Elves. The Merethic era is the prehistoric time after the exodus of the gods and magic from the world, at the founding of the Adamantine Tower, and before the arrival of Iskrimor the Nord in Tamriel. The following are the most notable events of the Dawn Era, presented thruffly in sequence as it must be understood by creatures of time such as ourselves. The cosmos formed from the Arbus, chaos or totality, by Anu and Padome, Akatosh, Ariel, formed and time began. The gods at Ada formed. Lorcan convinced or tricked the gods into creating the mortal plane, Nern. The mortal plane was at this point highly magical and dangerous. As the gods walked, the physical makeup of the mortal plane and even the timeless com continuity of existence itself became unstable. When Magic Magnus, architect of the plans for the mortal world, decided to terminate the project, the gods convened at the Adamantine Tower, Dorini Tower, the oldest known structure in Tamriel, and decided what to do. Most left when Magic did. Others sacrificed themselves into other forms so that they might stay, the El Elnofe. Lorcan was condemned by the gods to exile in the mortal realms, and his heart was torn out and cast from the tower, where it landed, a volcano formed, with magic, in the mythic sense, gone. The cosmos stabilized. Elven history, finally linear, began, uh, mythic, uh, era, I guess? Um, 2500. Or, wait, was it Merethic? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Merethic era. The Merethic era. The Merethic era was figured by early Nord scholars as a series of years numbered in reverse order, backward from the uh, from their beginning of time. The founding of the Cameron dynasty, recorded as year zero of the first era. The prehistoric events of the Merethic era are listed here with their traditional Nordic Merethic dates. The earliest Merethic date cited by King Harold's scholars was Merethic era 2500, the Nordic reckoning of the first year of time. As such, the Merethic era extends from Merethic era 2500 in the distant, pa distant past to Merethic era 1, the year before the founding of the Cameron dynasty and the establishment of the White Gold to Tower as an independent city-state. According to King Harold's bards, Merethic Era 2500 was the date of construction of the Adamantine Tower on Balfiera Island in High Rock, the oldest known structure of Tamriel. This corresponds roughly to the earliest historical dates given in various unpublished Elvish chronicles. During the early Merethic Era, the aboriginal beast peoples of Tamriel, the ancestors of the Khajiit, Argonian, Orcish, and other beast folk lived in preliterate communities throughout Tamriel. In the Middle Merethic Era, the Aldmeri mortals of elven origin, ref refugees, left their doomed and now lost continent of Ald Aldmeris, also known as Old Elnufe, and settled in southwestern Tamriel. The first colonies were distribu distributed at wide intervals on islands along the entire coast of Tamriel. Later, inland settlements were founded primarily in fertile lowlands in southwest and central Tamriel. Wherever the beast folk encountered the elves, the sophisticated, literate, technologically advanced Altmeri cultures displaced the primitive beast folk 
into the jungles, marshes, marshes, mountains, and wastelands. The adamantine tower was rediscovered and captured by the Dorini, a prominent and powerful Aldmeri clan. The crystal tower was built on Somerset Isle and later White Gold Tower in Cyrodiil. During the Middle Marathic era, Aldmeri explorers mapped the coasts of Vardenfell, building the first era High Elven wizard towers at Ald. Redania, Balfell, Tel Arun, and Tel Mora in Morrowind. It was also during this period that Aelid. Oh, I went back. One sec. Uh, wild Elven settlements flourished in the jungles around White Gold Tower, present day Cyrodiil. Wild Elves, also known as the Heartland High Elves, preserved the Dawn Era magics and language of the Elnofe. Ostensibly, a tribute land to the High King of Alinor, the Heartland's long lines of communication from the Somerset Isles' sovereignty effectively isolated Cyrodiil from the High Kings at Crystal Tower. The late Middle Marathic era is the period of the High Velothi culture. The Chimer, ancestors of the modern Dunmer, or Dark Elves, were dynamic, ambitious, long-lived elven clans devoted to fundamentalist ancestor worship. The Chimer clans follow the prophet Veloth out of the ancestral elven homelands in the southwest to settle in the lands now known as Morrowind. Despising the secular culture and profane practices of the Dwemer, the Chimer also coveted the lands and resources of the Dwemer, and for centuries provoked them with minor raids and territorial disputes. The Dwemer, dwarves, free-thinking, reclusive elven cl clans devoted to the secrets of science, engineering, and alchemy, established underground cities and communities in the mountain range, later the Velothi Mountains, separating modern Skyrim and Morrowind. The late Marethic era marks the precipitous decline of Velothi culture. Some Velothi settled in vi villages near declining and abandoned ancient Velothi towers. During this period, Velothi high culture disappeared on Vardenfell Island. The earliest Dwemer freehold colonies date from this period. Degenerate Velothi devolved into tribal cultures, which in time evolved into the modern Great Houses of Morrowind, or persisted as the barbarian Ashlander tribes. The only surviving traces of this tribal culture are scattered Velothi towers and Ashlander nomads on Vardenfell Island. The original first era high elven wizard towers along the coast of Tamriel were also abandoned about this time. It was in the late Marethic era that the pre-literate humans, the so-called Netic people, from the continent of Atmora, also Atmora or the Elderwood in Altmaris, migrated and settled in northern Tamriel. The Nord culture hero Ysgrimor, leader of a great colonizing fleet to Tamriel, is credited with developing a runic transcription of Nord speech based on Elvish principles, and so Ysgrimor is considered the first human historian. Ysgrimor's fleet landed at Hasaric Head at the extreme northern tip of Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim, sorry, Broken Cape. The uh, Nords built there the legendary city of Sarthal. The elves drove the men away during the Night of Tears, but Ysgrimor soon returned with his 500 companions. Also, during the late Marethic era, the legendary m immortal hero, warrior, sorcerer, and king, variously known as Pelinil Whitestroke, Harold, Harry Breeks, Izmir, Hans the Fox, etc., wandered Tamriel, gathering armies, conquering lands, ruling, then abandoning his kingdoms to wander again. Alright, and that's going to be it. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you later.